There are some things that will always get Yu-Gi-Oh players excited. For example, when new bandits drops and that one pesky problem card is finally getting banned. Or when new set is released that shakes off the metagame. But there's one thing that will get people even more excited. And that's the release of new sun mechanic. Except for maybe pendulum, but we're just gonna ignore that one. But there was also another mechanic where people had some issues at first, and that was the link summoning. The interesting part here is that the issue wasn't really with the summoning mechanic itself, but rather that the summoning mechanic impacted the older mechanics like Synchro, Exceed, Fusion and also Pendulum. For those of you who don't know, before the Mastery 2020 revision, every deck needed to use the extra monster zones and link arrows, not just Pendulum and Link. So if Little Jimbo wanted to summon 2 blue as Ultimate Dragon, he needed to summon a Link 2 monster first. Not that the arrow would be able to summon 2 blue as Ultimate Dragon at one point, but it's just that feeling of being forced to summon the Link monster first that really annoyed people. In general though, the most decks just didn't care about the Link summoning mechanic, because often one extra monster summon was enough, and even if not, Link monsters were just kinda easy to summon, so they just summoned the Link 2 monster first. But there were definitely some outliers, like for example Burning Abyss had huge issues with Link mechanic, because indeed, not every Link monster was a Burning Abyss, so if you summon a Link monster, every BA would indeed die. But there were also some other decks, where people thought that deck would be crazy now, because what if the deck doesn't even need the extra deck? It must be busted now, right? So many people back then expected Monarchs to be kinda crazy, or at least more playable than before, because it just doesn't care about the Link summoning mechanic. Only small issue, the deck still had like 4 cards on the ban list, and also at the time of Link release, there was a certain deck running around called Zodiac Beast that was kinda better than Monarchs. Even better? At the release of Link Summoning, there was also another deck that was kinda similar to Monarchs called True Draco that was just way better than Monarchs in every aspect. In general though, people expected the game to slow down a bit because there were just more restrictions than there were before. And then they showed us Firewall Dragon. Small reminder for those of you who don't know the pre erotic version of Firewall. First of all, he just needs 2 plus monsters, so he's extremely generic. Then, once while phase up on the field as a quick effect, you can target monsters on the field or in the graveyard up to the number of monsters calling to this card and return them to the hand. And then the second effect of the monster is that if a monster discard points to is destroyed by battle or sent to the graveyard, you can smash some one monster from your hand. It shouldn't be too hard to see why this card had some issues. Maybe just that there's not a single once per turn on this card, but that's just a hot take. So with the release of Firewall Dragon, there were immediately like 20 different FTK videos on YouTube that abused Firewall Dragon. Were they good? No. But were they good content? For sure. I think the only kinda viable Firewall FTK that was viable on release of Firewall was the Dinosaur FTK. To explain the FTK really fast, you basically needed any way to pop a baby and a baby. And then you get to a point where you have Firewall and you loop Grand Soils over and over again, that basically means you have infinite monster reborns, and then you at one point get to a point where you just some enter bloody over and over again to loop the entire hand of your opponent and the entire deck of your opponent. Small issue with this deck is that the combo takes like 50 minutes to resolve, so if your opponent would just sit there and say, yeah, resolve your combo, it would end up in time, and so you need to call the judge and tell your opponent, yeah, you should just scoop. Especially because the loop rulings back then were different than they are now. I think the only other deck that used Firewall Dragon back then on release of the Link Era was World Shadows, and you might ask to yourself, was this deck a good deck? Probably not. But was it good enough to win a European YCS? We don't talk about that. So yeah, on release Firewall wasn't really the biggest issue for the game. But this will change immediately with the release of the second set of the Link Era being Circuit Break. Because in Circuit Break there was one important monster being Spiral Double Helix. With the release of Double Helix, Spiral became the first tier 0 Link combo deck. And for sure Firewall was part of some combos, but most of the times Firewall was just part of the end board because you could bounce some cards back to the hand. And I think if Firewall would just have been used in this way, there wouldn't be an issue with Firewall, because if Firewall would have been banned for this reason, then Bangle Lance would also need to be banned. But still, it was the first time when Firewall Dragon saw competitive play in the best deck of the format. It wouldn't take too long for the next big combo pile to use Firewall Dragon, because in the next core set, Extreme Force, the next big Link combo pile just rated for Firewall Dragon. But this time around, it was not just a combo pile, it was a pile that gave birth to a god. And not just any god, it was a pent god. This time around, in Pendulum, Firewall Dragon was not just there because he was a good interruption on the end board as a bounce, but also, the link arrows of Firewall Dragon were kinda nice for the Pendulum summon, because he could just point to the left and the right, and you could basically Pendulum some 3 monsters from the extra deck without any big issues. But once again, if Firewall would have just been used in this way, it would have been probably fine, because having a bounce is fine, and the link arrows of Firewall are also okay. It wouldn't break the game for that reason. 
But there was another card in Extreme Force that would bring Firewall to its fullest potential, and this card is Isolde, my beloved. Because with the release of Flames of Destruction, Goki would finally be the deck to break Firewall Dragon completely. You might ask yourself, why it took Goki this long to break Firewall Dragon? Because in general, Firewall and Gokis were both in Call of the Duelist. The answer is kinda simple, because first of all, now there was Isolde, and Isolde and Gokis are kinda busted together, but also, the Nightmares were introduced in Flames of Destruction. A big issue that Goki had at first was that there were just not that many good Link monsters that you could go into. But now with the Nightmares, you had like the most generic monsters possible that were also good going second, and also they had great Link arrows for extra linking. As well as Isolde, that was probably one of the best Link 2 monsters ever printed. So now basically every Goki plus extender was a full extra link with an Ibli on the opponent's board. And back then an extra link was way more busted because every summon mechanic was restricted to the extra monster zone. The reason why Gokis and Firewall were so crazy together was because you could basically abuse the effect that every Goki serves another Goki when the monster is sent to the graveyard and Firewall can special summon any monster that was in your hand. So basically as long as you had a monster in your hand and you link away Goki, you could special summon monsters from your hand as long as you had Gokis in deck that didn't search for this turn. To make things worse, one month later Sky Striker got introduced into the TCG. And while pure Sky Striker didn't abuse Firewall for anything except for maybe cherries, Trickster Sky Striker could abuse Firewall for a nasty OTK line. For the ODK you basically just need a Firewall Dragon on board that points to a Trickster Lilibel and a Trickster Lycros in the graveyard. And because of Fawn Drones, it was just way easier to get the buddies on the board for Firewall Dragon. To explain this ODK really fast, like I said, you need a Firewall, Lilibel pointing to the Firewall, and then a Trickster Lycros in the graveyard. Then you just attack with the Lilibel, lose the Lilibel to add back the Lycros, Use Lycris, bounce back the Lilibel, special summon her, trigger the effect of Firewall Dragon, special summon the Lilibel back into the zone of Firewall Dragon, rush the Lycris, attack directly with Lilibel again, use the effect again, add back Lycris, and then from there on you can just do the same thing over and over again. Another card that got really popular with the release of Horned Drones was Phantom Sky Blaster. Because if you opened Horned Drones and Phantom Sky Blaster, you basically had 6 monsters that you could use for any Link Sum. You could actually extra Link with those two cards alone, but it wasn't really good because you also needed 2 monsters in hand and it wasn't competitive, but it was still really interesting that you could do this. And who would have guessed this combo also used Firewall Dragon. And from this point on, things just got worse and worse, because one month later in Battle of Legends, Topologic Gumbler Dragon was introduced in TCG, and this card was really Fun. Because now Goki wouldn't just extra link you, Goki would extra link you and loop 6 cards out of your hand. The dynamics with Firewall Dragon would basically stay the same for a while now. But next core set being Summer Nether Horizon, there was a new TCG exclusive archetype that would change things a bit, but it would take for the next wave of the support to break Firewall Dragon completely. And this archetype was the Danger Archetype. In Cybernetic Horizon there are only 4 different danger monsters, and all of those were kinda good, but the issue was that it wasn't enough to build a complete deck just with danger monsters, but with Soul Fusion there were like 8 different ones, with like 3 of those being really good, being Nessie, Jackalope and Tsuchinoko, and this gave birth to the probably scariest deck in the recent time, being Danger Dark World FTK. Because if you remember all of those OG combo videos when Firewall Dragon was announced, this deck was basically all of this, just and good. Because the dangers basically enabled you to draw through your entire deck while putting monsters on the board. And through that, you could easily end up in a situation where you just have Firewall Dragon on board, next to it is a Dark World monster, and the Grave is a Grapher, and you have a Ken Soldier on board. And through that, you have infinite material for your Ken Soldier with the Grapher that just comes back every time. If you want to see the deck in action, there's a legendary featured match of Rhysius London where Jesse Cotton plays this deck against a child. Normally FTK decks are not really an issue because FTKs mostly are just good going it going first and often just die to hand traps. But the issue with this deck was that it had none of those issues. Because this deck was just able to play through multiple hand traps. But the deck wasn't just able to play through multiple hand traps, it was also able to stop any hand traps from being used because one month earlier a card called Outer Empty as a thought was released. And so if the deck could start with two life force on board, it could just go into Niala, go into Azathoth and stop basically any hand trap from being used, except Imperm. And the big issue with that was that one Imperm wasn't enough to stop the deck, because if you only opened with one Imperm and you used it on Firewall Dragon, he can just use Unicorn, spin back the Firewall Dragon and summon him again, and if you use it on Ken Soldier, he can basically do the same. Only difference, that if you use Imperm on Ken Soldier, it's way easier to extend through, because you can just add it back to hand and summon it again, but even better, Soul Charge was still legal, and because you drew through your entire deck, 
In almost every game you had access to Soul Charge. The only hand trap that would consistently stop this FTK was Drone Lockbird, because Dimension Shifter wasn't even legal. For every other hand trap you're basically forced to use them as early as possible because in other ways they will just summon Azithod and you won't be able to use it anyways. But fortunately there's one other solution for the stack and this is to gamble. Because it was still a danger deck so if you get lucky you can just stop them from playing. So yeah the deck was insanely strong at going first. But what about going second? The big issue there was the danger monsters in general are kinda good at going second because they are just big buddies. Also decks back then were just in general weaker than they are now, so danger is just often were enough to push through bots because they are just really good at going second. So yeah, this deck was basically the nail in the coffin for Fire Dragon. Because there was no way that you can justify having Firewall Dragon the format with a deck like this where the only win condition is through Firewall Dragon. Later down the line, Joshua Schmidt still managed to top a YCS with Danger FTK, but this time around the FTK was just so insanely five that it was just really cool to look at this. Because you just looped through Zayujas and using Zayujas you stack your deck from the bottom, and then you use Slash Drawer and FTK your opponent. So FTKs were still possible, but they were definitely worse than the Firewall FTKs. Like you've seen in this video, Firewall had many issues and should have probably been banned as soon as he was released. And for many players there's the question why he was legal for so long. And the answer for that is kinda simple, because he had the strongest power on his side that you can have on your side. The power of anime. Because he was basically the boss monster of the new anime protagonist, Konami didn't want to ban this card, and it's also probably the reason why he was unbanned with Nevada. But yeah, if it for sure was the reason, we don't know, but it's the most likely reason. And this was the story about Firewall Dragon in competitive Yu-Gi-Oh, and I hope we will never see him again in a good deck. If you enjoyed this video, consider leaving a like, and if you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing to my channel. And then yeah, see you in the next video.